That ever was the finest sight Well, all our boys were fixed to fight On D-Day, 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 D-Day We hope they'll soon be coming back For now they're on a solid track Since D-Day, 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 D-Day Did you tell me you drafted into the service? No, no, I was, I was a volunteer I was a real gung-ho guy <laughs> I wanted to go fight I, I wanted to fight I wasn't drafted because, you know, I wasn't, I wanted to be there in the action. I, I, you know, I already made up my mind and I was ready to quit my job. I finished a very important job and that was to recommission some of the submarines that were in the mothball fleet at that time. We had a lot of submarines that hadn't been used since World War I. And of course my father and, my, and his brother, my uncle, my father was at Assumption College in Worcester. He was training, it's like ROTC, you know. He was trained to become an officer. And my uncle was already over there. He was fighting with the 104th Infantry Regiment, which was, a new, you know, the Yankee Division was, part of the Yankee Division. And so he saw combat. And so um, he never told me much about combat. But I bet his military record, boy, his military record is fantastic. But of course it was all handwritten. They didn't type it out then. You, you have, you have to read that with the handwriting. Do your basic training? I did my basic training down at Aberdeen Proving Grounds. I, well, I first went to Fort Devens, of course, to, you know, to be processed, uh, to become military. I, I, I volunteered for the Army in, on November 3rd, 1941, just a month or so before Pearl Harbor. See, I didn't know Pearl Harbor was, was so close. Who, who knew said that Pearl Harbor? But it didn't matter. That didn't matter to me because I know I knew I wanted to be a regular army and I wanted to go fight. I wanted to help liberate the people in Europe. Our last our last night in New York City, before we shipped overseas, and we knew we were going to. We, we didn't know where we were going to land up, but we 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 landed in Northern Ireland. We went to Belfast, and from Belfast we boarded a train and we took the train all the way up to County Antrim and County Antrim is on the west, on, on the east coast of Ireland, up in the northern part and it's, it's, uh, it's across from Scotland. So when I did go to, uh, go to England to uh, take my parachute training, or my parachute training to be, to be exact, I went over to England across the channel from Bel from not Belfast, but from a place up in the north of Ireland, and we landed in Scotland in Stranraa, and from there we boarded a train and we took the train all the way down to Nottingham. So I was there uh, weeks ahead of the uh, main body of the 508. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, I have to say yes, unqualified yes, because I really wanted to go fight the Germans. I, I was mad at them, that they were bastards. The guys at, this, at the boss that I was working for, I said, how the hell can these guys come to the United States and, and, you know, and behave the way they do? You know, I, I was getting teed off with the, all these Germans. And yet, I knew the president of the, of the college, uh, president of the Bosch, his name was Donald P. Hess, and he was, uh, he was, being, he was being investigated by the FBI and everything else. And uh, of course, it didn't mean anything to me about that, but it, it, they were doing a job, you know. I understood they were doing a job. And, uh, but they were still for, they were for Hitler. Oh, they did it, because I did it, you know, they wouldn't do it. For, they wouldn't do that right in, <laughs> in your face. But I, I knew, I could read their minds. I knew damn right well that, that they were doing everything for Germany. Yeah, yeah. When I get, by the time I got to Aberdeen, of course, when I was at Benning, was mostly people, not, not Benning, but when I, when I was up at um, Fort Devons, Camp Devons or whatever they called it then. But I wasn't at Devons long, just long enough to be processed and board the train, take the nice long train road, train ride down to uh, Aberdeen Proving Grounds, uh, which, which is uh, just north of Baltimore. My father died when I was 13 years old, and my mother had four kids. 
I was the oldest child, first born, and then my brother was the last born, and he was five years younger than me. So I'm 90 now, he's 85, because his birthday is the 3rd of March, my birthday is the 11th of March. So we were both Marsh babies, we were both Aries. You know, I don't know if you bother with the, with the signs of the zodiac. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he's a great guy, and uh, he was in the Navy during the war. Submarine service, that's what my brother was. So, uh, and then my sister was in the Marines, and she was in Hawaii, my sister. And then one sister stayed home with my mother. So uh, the three of us were in the service, and uh, we were all, so far as I know, I think we were all volunteers. No, I never had any hate. Uh, I say I never had any hate, that's not true. There were some people I hated. Yeah, I, I, I hated Hitler, of course, <laughs> and I hated Tojo, you know, I hated, uh, I hated the Japs, but I didn't feel the same animosity towards the Japs that I did towards the Germans, because the Germans were, well, they, they were a different breed, cat, you know, they were, they were a little different than, than those Japs. <laughs> I had every kind of combat experience involving involving everything, involving aircraft, involving tanks, involving men, involving machinery, you name it. I've had every kind of experience. The only thing is I, I never had any naval experience. You know? And the only time I had any, any naval experience was when I came home from the, for the war in Europe. I would say that the most dangerous was the first day, the first day, because we could have been blown up. We could have been blown up, but they had, well, when we landed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, see, that's a stick, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. So there were 18 men in the plane who were pathfinders. I was only one of the Pathfinders. Fayetteau Richardson was only one. He was the third man out of the plane. I was the fourth man out of the plane. In back of me was this lieutenant. He was the fifth man out of the plane. And then the sixth man was Barbio. And then the seventh, and then the eighth, and then the ninth. The first nine men that jumped out of the plane, we all landed together in Normandy. The nine men forward from 10 to 18, bingo. Gone. Boom. They're all done. No more war for them. They're off. They're gone to their peaceful place wherever they go. So we were the lucky ones. And the other guys, they came with us. They were going to fight with us. But when we hit the ground and we didn't have them with us, we missed them because we needed those guys to turn on lights. We, we were supposed to set up lights on the DZ, the drop zone, DZ, DZ is the drop zone. So wherever we landed, it was the drop zone, and we were supposed to set up the lights so when the planes flew over us, they would see a T. So say, here's, here's, the Norm here's all of France. Here's the Normandy Peninsula, Sherbrooke Peninsula, which jets out. And here's the Atlantic Ocean over here. There's the channel. And over here is, that's all land. So here we are. We're coming in. We went around. We came in on this side, which was the west side of the Sherbrooke Peninsula. And we were flying dead reckoning right straight across the peninsula until we got 10 miles from the beach. This is where the guys were going to take place. The invasion was going to take place here the next morning. It's six o'clock in the morning. They were supposed to. They were supposed to begin coming off their LSTs and coming in, you know, fighting the Germans on the beaches, being killed. You saw the movies. So they haven't even. They're still out in the ocean. We're already on the land now. We've jumped on the plane. 
we got the signal to go. So when the, when we have the signal to jump, a green light goes on. Up until then, we have a red light. Red lights. Wait, wait, wait. Not yet. And as soon as the green light goes on, bang, 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 everyone jumps out the door. Boom, 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 boom. We're all coming right up, out the door. Then we hit the ground. And as soon as we hit the ground, got to get out of our equipment. We got all, we were carrying, we were carrying all kinds of stuff on us, you know. I had that radar set, the Eureka set, which weighed about 60 pounds, the Eureka set alone. Did I say 60? Well, maybe 30. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I, I managed to hit the ground, but it was bulky, you know, it took up a lot of room. So I couldn't wear anything else. I couldn't, I couldn't have a rifle. I'll, so they gave us Colt 45. So I had a Colt 45 that I could use. And of course, it was easy enough to get the Colt 45 out. I knew it if you had to. So when I hit the ground, <clears throat> I hit the ground and I kissed the earth. I was so glad to be on the ground. I was afraid. You know, I was just to us it was routine because the pathfinders trained in England. We made jump after jump after jump after jump after jump all over different parts of England. We never knew where we were going to jump at night. And, and it would be only our plane, just our plane load. We never saw the other Pathfinders. We knew that there were two other Pathfinder teams, and we were only one of three Pathfinder teams, and yet we were all headed toward the same drop zone. We were all going to go in into combat in France, in Normandy, 10 miles from the beaches, and now how the hell am I going to recognize these guys? They didn't. They didn't expect us to recognize the guys because we never saw them. They never saw us. We never saw them. Because the other guys, their planes, when we hit the coast of Normandy, flying in on the west coast, and then we're flying in towards the channel, and before we get to the beaches where the boats are going to discharge the guys for the landing craft coming up on the beaches and the soldiers are coming out and being shot down, you know, being mowed down by the Germans. At that time, we were already, God only knows where I was then. But we were going to be 10 miles away. I was in the 508. Some of the other uh, paratroopers, the 505, they landed closer to the beaches than we did. So they were probably only about six miles from the beaches instead of about ten miles. And so then there were some other paratroopers from the 505, uh, from the 50, uh, 506 and 507, all these other, they, they, they were scattered around too. So they, you look at a map, I, here's, here's the map right here. So here you see, this, here's Utah Beach, see, because our mission was to come in to protect Utah Beach. Mm -hmm. Omaha Beach was down here, you know, that's where, where they had to climb up, yeah. had to go up over the cliffs. Here it was easy, it was a, it was a snap. So here's the 507 DZ, here's the 505 DZ, here's the Here's the uh, DZA from uh, 377. Here's the, uh, what's the, the 506 DZ. Here's the 506. Now see how close these are to the beaches. And we were, we were the furthest, 507, 508, 305. We were all up in this area here. And that's where I was down in here, Chef Dupont, at Picoville. This, that's, that's the TZ where we were supposed to land it. We landed really down here, the Pe down near Picoville. So that's, this just, this just shows where, where we were supposed to drop. That's not where we actually dropped. We never, you know, of course, concentration camps come at the end of the war. When the war is coming, 
to a conclusion, and it's going to be finished. That's when the troops finally began to discover, because that time Germany was already to surrender. We were already ready to meet with the Russians. And then after we met with the Russians at the Elm, the war came to a very swift conclusion. Then. experience was when I came home from the, for the war in Europe and I was on board this great big ship you know and they were putting me down to the bottom of the hole in the hole of the ship and, and we were all from Massachusetts we were down in the this, this far down as you can get in the ship and, and still be on the ship otherwise you'd be in the ocean and we we were down in the bottom of the ship in the hole and we would work almost 24 hours a day we, I think we had about six hours sleep a night, if we were lucky to get that much sleep. Because we had three, when we came home from Europe, when I left Marseille, they said, we're going to give you guys in Massachusetts, we're going to give you guys a break. We're going to let you volunteer. We're going to let you volunteer to wait on tables, work in the ward room. Now the ward room is where the officers, where they eat their meals. The men on the board ship, they could only have two meals a day, but the officers would have three meals. And we had a lot of women officers, nurses, and the gals were on there too. So we would have three feedings for breakfast, three feedings for lunch, and three feeders, feedings for dinner. And then after that, after we cleaned up from them, we, then we could go down to the hole where we were and we could sleep. That's, that's the experience I had coming home, 10 days to cross the across the Atlantic on board that ship. And it was the General Meigs was the name of the ship. It was General M-E-I-G-N.